Actually, let's look at the events that are coming right now because they are coming in a little bit more than two hours. They will be upon us. So let us look at all the stuff that is coming. Fairy Bros is ending after today. And then these top two weeks here will be gone. We'll have two more weeks of Isekai Quartet and we'll have the Goblin Full Moon Night Market events uh, coming through. So let's look at all of the stuff that's coming uh, with that tring tring. Call, call, call. Wow. Uh, nice. So what we see is nine events. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So this one is highlighted. This is the main one. This one basically talks about getting the goblin baton. And it talks about defeating monsters near your level with the baton skill to collect the goblin coins. And if you do that, you have a chance to activate Tada Time. And when Tada Time activates, uh, Tada will appear and drop goblin coins when you defeat monsters near your level. So it'll be like sprinkling and stuff. And then you can use the baton to get up to 200 coins per day and they will be in your inventories, etc. tab. So they won't be in like a bar in the bottom right, but they will actually be in your etc. tab. And then when you reach the capacity, then you can't get any more. And then you will also get one full moon buckwheat jelly. So I think there's one shop. Nice. I really love scrolling and then being in a different part of the patch notes. God, I hate Chrome. Why do you do this? This is so stupid. So the goblin coins will be the currency for some shops, but the buckwheat jelly will also be the currency for some other stuff. So... And you can only get that if you cap for that day. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Dude, I think after stream I'm gonna get me some pancakes. Dude, I feel like eating some pancakes, baby. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, so the other stuff that we have is all up here. So now we can scroll back to the top one. <laughs> Which, it would make sense to make that one the first one, but let's not do that. So... This is all Isekai, right? Yeah, okay. So when we have Baobal's Jewelry Shop, this is the one that sells all of the rings. So you'll have cubes that are the quality of Meister cubes, so they can go up to Legendary. And you can use them, uh, so they're cheaper than the regular cubes, but you can only use them on event rings. But there's a lot of event rings, so it's actually pretty good value on these things. So you can get the jewel crafting rings and boxes, open the boxes, fuse the gems together. Once you get to S, combine that with the jewel crafting ring, make four of any type of S rings, and then combine, uh, uh, fuse those all four together to get the master SS ring. That's the strongest individual ring. Synergy Ring can get as strong of stats as the Master SS Ring, but only if you have it equipped on at least five characters within your account at the same time. That'll give it a bigger set bonus, and then it will be as good. So individually, this is a weaker ring, but it'll get the same strength as this one if you have it on five characters. That's why it's also a lot cheaper to get than this will be, because you have to, you know... Oh yeah, you can buy 10 a day for these. Um, limit, so... You do want to cap on that for a while until you get enough rings made. Then you have the Cosmos Ring and the Reboot Cos... Uh, so the Reboot Cosmos Ring for us, I guess, and the Reboot Vengeful Ring. These are more expensive, but... Uh, and they're weaker than the maximum p possibility of the other ring, but you get them fully upgraded ring right from the get-go. So they are stronger than the Synergy Ring you get, but no... Uh, no set bonus, no getting stronger for having it on multiple characters, but also no RNG involved and maybe getting unlucky and spending a lot more. Uh, Vengeful Stone, that's something non-reboot, so you don't have to worry about that. So th th those are the event rings. That's the jewelry, dude. Then Smithy's Forge. This one um, sells a bunch of pouches that just have multiple items in them. So he's got um, flames, potential scrolls, uh, cubes, node stones, arcane symbols, uh, and that's it. So it's very limited, but he has pouches of them. So stacks of multiple that you can get. So that's Smithy's forge. He forges because he has pouches. And of course, a forge makes pouches. Very logic. 
uh, logical. Stitch's Boutique has all of the um, special items. Basically, chairs and mounts. And you can buy uh, tickets and then one per day. And then if you have 10 of the tickets, then you can trade them in. So this is where the Android is, the Meteoroid coupon that has the Meteoroid and the permanent untradeable Lithium Heart. So if you don't have a heart at all on your character, but you do want to get something there, which I don't think... Oh, no, I have one here. Fuck it. Uh, then you can get go for this from the Boutique. So then you can have a heart where if you upload it, uh, upload it, upgraded, at least those upgrades will stay with you for a while. What are you guys saying in chat? I'll put jelly in my butt wheat. Nice. Use Firefox. No, thank you. I have two rose blooms that are slowly getting there. Ooh, hopefully they look nice. What up, Shivaldi? How you doing? So could it be when a character I have no rings on to go for the Vengeful rings? Yeah, Vengeful and Cosmos will be quick, easy stats. Yeah, for sure. If you're planning on getting rings on a lot of different characters, then the Synergy Ring would be nice because then you can get more stats on all of them combined, but only if you have it on five characters. So if you're planning on getting those rings on multiple characters, you can make good progress and better progress than the other characters, but you'll have to get it on five different characters. Uh, and then together with that, you can also get the My Marvelous Moon Chair, which is basically this, and then your face will be the moon. Uh, full moon, there's a permanent Haichi mount coupon, that's uh, this thing, and there's also a damage skin extraction coupon, which I think means that you can take a damage skin that you've learned on a character, turn it back into the coupon, and then you can trade that coupon within your account and then give another character that damage skin, if it's one that you really like. So that's all part of the boutique, so it's more special items and more, um, more looks and stuff, but also functionality in the Lydium Heart. Then you have Sweepy's General Store, and these kind of have more the regular items that you're um, that you're familiar with. However, these all cost jelly. So for these, you have to maximize your coins on multiple days to be able to buy these. And here you can get things like um, honor medals, um, medals of honor. Sorry. Um, I see trade boost potions, job advancement coins, but this is ten jelly, so that's like capping on ten days. Uh, mysterious monster blooms, character slot expansion, pendant slot expansion, reboot mezzo pouch times 10 for four jellies. This is in no way ever worth. Selective slot coupon. A lot of these items are kind of shit, by the way. There's only a few items here that are good. Um, uh, never mind. There's no good items from this shop whatsoever. So this shop, you can basically completely skip on reboot. The only one that you maybe do is final form and sub color changes for Kaiser. That could maybe be worth. Very, very maybe the job advancement coin. But most of these items for reboot are pretty, are pretty shit. Compared to the Golux rings, uh, they're probably as good as. Um, they're about as good as a 15 star, I would say. And then the Vengeful, uh, and then the Master Ring SS and the Stacked Synergy Ring are, are probably about as good as a 16 or a 17 star. Uh, and then the Tenebris and the um, uh, and the Glory Guard Rings are about as good as 18 stars. Although for Akana, they're about almost as good as a 19 star because of the HP scaling. Which shop is not worth? The general store doesn't seem like a lot of these items are very expensive. And they're very basic items that we can already buy for Mezzo. Oh yeah, the one thing here is the Maple Tour VIP Pass. That's the one. So you'll have to cap on a day and then you get a jelly. And then you can use that jelly to get an extra Maple Tour VIP Pass. So you guys know Maple Tour, right? Where you usually, if you want to do more than two runs, you have to pay Maple Points. So you can buy one of these coupons to get one extra entry. Uh, so it's basically free money, uh, well, free money, like one minute of your time and like 27 extra mil, right? So this one could be worth, but again, this is only for jelly, so you have to cap on points on that character first that day to be able to even have any currency for that shop. Then you have Dr. and KB's Magic Batons. That's the one that we are going to do the, um, the contest on, exclamation mark contest, on Friday. And so you'll want coins for this. 
Basically, you pay coins, 100 coins, and then you can use the baton. Uh, and then you can use it up to twice. Yeah, two times per, per day per world. And you will get random levels on your character between 1 and 10. But I think there's not an av there's not like the same amount of chance for all the outcomes. There's like different percentages. But we'll be able to talk to the NPCs when it comes out to see what chance of which... Um, I expect there to be like a normal distribution, right? Where the biggest chance is to have like four, five, or six levels. And then slightly lower chance to have like two, three, or seven, or eight. And then a very low chance of having one or two or nine or ten. Something like that. I, I, I am guessing, but... The name of the forest is that gives you madness levels. A phantom forest, yeah. Are we still restricted to three cleans per day? Or did it go from two to three? Because I thought they increased how many times you can you can cleanse. Oh, might be. Might have to read up on that. Uh, and then you can also make a typhoon growth potion by paying a total of two thousand coins. So, of course, you can never get, like, two coins a day. So, you, what you can do is pay 200 coins per day. And then, once you get to a total of 2,000, then you can um, claim a Typhoon Growth Potion. You can only make one of those. But for the people who don't know, Typhoon Growth Potion gives you a free level all the way up to 239 to 240. And if you use it past level 240, you will just get the amount of experience you would need to get from 239 to 240. Uh, to 240 that's the the most experience you can ever get from the potion so for 240 to 241 that'll roughly be half a level which is still considerate of course uh considerate considerable ah now it's five per day okay that's why i thought yeah i'm making a new main character what ring should i be aiming for one's worth getting try stat legendary on at least eventually like the end game rings is you get a 22 star meister ring then you get a 22 star Meister ring, like a second one, and then you transfer hammer that into your superior ring so that you have a 21 star superior ring. And then the other two slots will be one of four rings now. Well, one of five rings, technically. So one of the rings that can fill that slot is the solid Golux ring. One that can fill that slot is the reinforced Golux ring. Then you have the Kana treasure ring from the Princess No prequests. You also have the Phantom Forest ring, the level 180, which is very difficult to enhance and difficult to obtain. Um, but is possible and then you will the fifth ring will be the uh, chaos I think it's chaos gloom ring so between those five you'll be where you will just basically be star forcing them until three of those blow up <laughs> and then the two strongest you will wear as your last two slots for your best in slot damage rings and then typically your drop rate rings and mezzo rings will be a combination of um, event rings pretty much and maybe sprinkled in um, a silver blossom ring some people uh, still go for black gate um, black gate city rings I never went for any of those um, but if not too many people go for those then farming those shouldn't be too difficult did you get all of that kind of fell Blowing up reinforced sounds crazy. Yeah, I have done that on my arc, right? Because my arc, my uh, reinforced ring was already 27% strength. Um, but you really don't have to see the reinforced ring as... Well, it's irreplaceable. But if you have two other rings that are stronger and you have them, then there's no value in the reinforced at that point. I mean, it could become your strongest drop gate ring. But later on in the game, how strong your individual rings are really doesn't matter at all for your for your killing speed there's only like a few classes that really need damage gear to really be able to level properly later on in the game most people can just have mezzo obtain gear and have like second rate third rate gear uh to give them um to give them stats i just noticed that the um your letters here are showing up through through the banner on the top of the map and I don't think that... L I don't like that. <laughs> but okay. My arcs reinforced boom too. Arcs are doomed with reinforced seams. Well, for me, the ring was doomed before I even started. Because the other two didn't have potential yet. Because I knew they could boom. But my reinforced already had a 27% uh, strength legendary potential. 
So I knew that if one had to boom out of the three, which one was it going to be? The one that was already legendary and already uh, cubed properly? Or was it, was it one of the two that wasn't cubed at all yet? Of course it was the cubed one. Of course that one is going to fucking blow up, right? Because that would waste me the most money because then I have to start from rare on the other two. So that's why I knew it was already doomed. But, you know. Uh, okay, and then we have the Goblin Baton, so that's the one talking about the coins and the Buckwheat Jelly. Then we have Goblin Fireworks, which is kind of nice. Basically, you pay 50 coins for Goblin Fireworks. I think you can do this... Can you do this once a day? Hang on. No, you can buy how many ever, however many you want, apparently. Cool. Uh, it costs you 50 coins. And you can use it to gain one of the following items at random. A thousand coins. Wait, non-reboot? No, that's not this one, right? That's this one. That's the Mesorrhean Goblin Cloud. Um, I do a thousand coins, 500 coins, 100 coins, or 50, what, what it costs. Or a full moon's magical energy, which gives you 15 weapon and magic attack for 15 minutes. So, if you get the buff, you get fucked. If you get 50 coins, then you break even, and it's whatever. If you get 100, 500, or 1,000, then you gain quite a bit. So this is a real gamble, because, of course, we don't know the, the odds, right? But I'm pretty sure that the odds of getting 100, 500, or 1,000 is probably very low. Must be single-digit percentages, right? I'm gonna assume that it's like 50% chance to get this, 40% chance to get this, and like 10% combined chance to get this would be my, my guess. They posted the odds on KMS, could you find that? It's 10% for 100 and worse for the others? Yeah, I would, I would guess that, yeah. You get nothing over half the time? Yeah, that's exactly what I would guess, yeah. Maybe it's like, si maybe it's like 60, um, 60, 25, 10, and then and then 3%, 2% or something. Um, so I wouldn't count at all on this making you like easy coins because if it did, then it wouldn't be in there. Then we just get more coins a day. This is very clearly there to like help people gamble and then one people, oh, one people, or like a few people will get a thousand and then everyone else will be like, oh, see, it's possible. My friend got a thousand and then all, everyone else is just gonna get their buffs or maybe their 50 coins back. Most people are gonna get, 60 percent 30 percent 8 to 0 0.8 yeah okay that's that's pretty much ex what did i say i said 50 40 and then 10 percent between these combined is what i guess and it's 60 30 and and 11 percent between these okay so i was basically exactly on the money okay i've played this game for a while i know how they operate okay so this is a huge scam as well but one thing we didn't talk about one thing you get is you get a fireworks explosion on the map. Yay! Isn't that worth your 50 coins already just by itself, guys? Wow, okay. Um, and then the Maze of Rain and Cloud. So that's one that's not available in uh, in Reboot. But basically, you sit on a chair and you throw, put money in it. And then you... Um, and then you throw the money around. And other people can loot it. But yeah. Then the Dream Emporium is a quest that you will get uh, on, uh, indubitably in your um, star tab. And... What's going to happen with that is that you will get a UI where you collect experience passively just while you're playing. And even when you're not logged in, you will still get experience, but it'll only be 50% of the efficiency. And then what's going to happen, uh, you can just collect experience on your character. Usu as usual with these things, um, it's very inefficient to use this on characters above level 200. Typically, it's okay to level characters up to level 200 with this, but these things tend to scale very poorly past level 200. So this is mainly like a leveling low, uh, low characters type of thing. And it does seem that you will be able to um, go for like a higher tier of... Um, of bonus experience once you reach more than a hundred hours so that's kind of nice you get a hidden quest so maybe it'll help you get more um, and usually there's a max to how many hours you can save up before you have to uh, pick it up like 24 or maybe 48 with a higher level so definitely activate this as soon as you can and then redeem it on I would say your lowest level character first that would seem the most um, uh, the most efficient to me 
Hidden quest could be a chair. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Or Orange Mushroom did have this, of course. You're absolutely right. Um, nope, that's KMST. Ghost Park ranking mode, prefer city. Oh no, this is ghost ranking. What am I thinking about? Where was the... Here it is. Demon Avenger? Demon Awakening? Wait, hang on. Oh, there we go. Fixed narrow. If you press Demon Avenger's Blood Feast quickly, it would output the effect twice. Oh, well. Improvements and bug fixes for bosses. Ursus Golden Time has returned to its normal time of 8 to 10 p.m. Oh, okay. Um, everyone, make sure to double check that it's uh, that the Golden Time. Ch maybe the Golden Time will change with this event. Maybe that's why it hadn't changed back yet, because we had skipped this um, this event. So make sure we keep an eye on that. We got three at once. There were five KMS patches that we did in two events. So we like redistributed all of the content within the quests, yeah. Can I have multiple Link Mules collecting experience in that event then? There will just be one passive thing collecting experience in the background. And then whenever you're on a character that you want to get the experience with, you can redeem it there. And then it'll just start um, gathering back from zero and start back up. And then you can redeem it on any other character you want. But every time you redeem it, it just redeems all of the experience and it starts back from zero. Did it give PST? Um, no, but the regular times is that it stops nine minutes before now and that it's the two hours before then. So like three, uh, two hours and nine minutes before now start and nine minutes before now end. That's the usual time. Uh, who just subbed? Jacques Zero. Thank you very much for subscribing. Welcome to the Scar Tarts. Grats on your extra chromosome badge and emotes. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. Thank you for dropping a Twitch Prime man. You told my friend the name of the forest that gives you madness, but the cheap bastard didn't even give you a couple bits. So here's my Prime sub homie. <laughs> Thank you very much, dude. Even though he might be a cheap motherfucker, at least his friends are generous. So he's got that going for him, which is nice. Thank you, man. <laughs> he's capital D coloning now. <laughs> Actually, it was also support desk who helped. So thank you also support desk for... Uh, you get partial credit for that Twitch Prime sub, okay? 20 to 22 KST and KMS as well. Now you can spam emotes, dude. Look at this. You can use Scarter Moses. Look at that. Look at that beautiful emote. Look at that happy monkey. He got his coin. He's so happy. Oh, yeah. You can do the low Mien one. Uh, we're basically just uh, going over the events that are starting tomorrow. So everyone has a good idea of what they want to spend their time on and what they can kind of safely avoid. And we're also looking at the, the KMS nodes uh, just to fill up the gaps that are not really uh, explained very well when they say like, sometimes in the GMS patch notes, they say like an extra reward, but they don't say what it is. So we're just looking at the, the KMS nodes to make sure that we know what it is exactly. Um, so it would seem that there's a bunch of pets coming back with this. So we'll probably see that tomorrow in the cash up update. It looks like unicorn hair and small characters. Oh God, you're gonna see a lot of these, dude. This is gonna be like printing fucking money. Look at this. This is all non-reboot, bonus potential scroll. Is this a bonus epic potential scroll? Is that what this says? Um, oh God. Odysseo. Nar. 
Ah, additional. <laughs> um, additional. Oh, oh shit. So this font is difficult to read. Holy shit. Oh. Op. Op. Opeak. Opeak. Sha. Oh god, dude. Jesus, this is so. D this is difficult to read because of the font. Holy fuck. Epic? Ep. Oh, epig. Oh, yeah, but. Oh, yeah, they have, don't have the C sound, so it's like a G. Oh, I see. Okay, um. The additional reward. What were we looking for? The additional reward for blessing of the goblin statue, right? Oh, here's the full... Okay, so here's the skill that you're going to be using, the baton, to get the coins. So it's going to look like that. So it looks like you're going to have to put it on a button and then activate it. And then when you hit it, it's going to give you those coins with like the little square hole in the middle. And then when you act when you activate the dude, it's going to be this. And then coins are just going to be flying everywhere. And you'll see a buff on the top right, okay? The bat... Um... So this is one where you get, oh yeah, this is the baton where you get random levels. Uh, instantly level up one to 10 times. The lower level you are, the bigger the chance of leveling up more. Oh, this is gonna make it tricky to do the contest though. We're gonna have to have characters around the same level. Oh, I'm gonna have to, Wait, oh, people doing the, oh God, I gotta start, I gotta change the contest rules then. Because if everyone is a different level, then people will have different chances of winning. What do you think is fair? Level 150 or is that too low? 160? It'll give people time to level a character to 160. I think 150 would be good, right? Because a bunch of people probably have level 140 characters, so they can just gain 10 levels first and get to 150 quickly. Very important addition. Okay, very important update. 101 minimum? Yeah, but a bunch of characters might not, a bunch of people might not have low level en enough characters to use it on. 150 seems fair, right? I'll do 150, okay. Blessing of the Goblin statue. Is it a chair? Oh, this is for the Typhoon potion. Refinery, so this is, yeah, this is the one for the pouches. Ah, here, full moon pouch gives one, five of each item. Oh, okay, this is... <laughs> the full moon pouch gives fives of each item. The goblin pouches can give one to a hundred of each item. The rates are as follows. One item, 45%. Two items, 45%. Five items, 9%. 
10 items, 0.8%. 50 items, 0.16%. 100 items, 0.04%. How many can you get? Um, uh, flame pouch, one per world. Powerful flame, two per world. Epic potential, one per world. Additional potential, one per world, one per world. Four per world. Oh, goblin core gemstone pouch and goblin selective arcane temple, no limit. But there are 100 coins each and you're probably gonna get one or two. You're 90% chance gonna get one or two. Uh, what is the average? We can calculate like the weighted average, right? Um, so that's 45 plus 90 plus 45 plus 8 plus 8 plus 4. 200 yeah so the average is two <laughs> the average you'll get is two per bag and it's a hundred so that's pretty brutal more likely to see while opening and get nothing than to get more than five actually true significantly more as well not just the meme but significantly more okay the jewel this is making the uh, so these are the the cubes that, that you can use so they're meister uh, tier and then here are all of the um, all of the rings that you can get. Oh, and the full moon rings can also be used on the Glorion and Tenebris and Chaos rings, by the way. So it's good to know that you can use them on them, even though the rings aren't available through the store like right, right now. Here's the boutique. So this is the one with the mounts, the damage skin, and uh, oh, this is what the damage skin is going to look like. Actually, it doesn't look bad. It's not going to have the divider, of course for like 10,000s and, uh, and 100 and hundred millions. All right, the general store, that's the one where you have to spend the jellies, where you can get the extra uh, VIP. Oh, it, it doesn't exist here, of course, because they don't have one. Uh, and here is the dream shop. Yeah, so you get, yeah, so a max of 12 hours in the beginning, and then I think it goes up as you level it. And it'll show you how much experience you get if you use it on the character that you're currently on. You can then go to Jumpy at the Night Market and exchange your dreams for experience. Oh, you have to go to the market to exchange it though. Okay. Oh, here, here, here. The pillow will store up to 24 hours of dreams, including when you're not online. While you're online, the dreams will be stored every 10 seconds. When you're offline, it will be stored every 20 seconds. Okay, 50% the, the rate, that's what they said. They're shared between all characters in the same Maple ID. Yes. Then you can go to Jumpy at the Midnight Market and exchange your dreams for experience. The experience will be given based on the character or level that you're claiming it on, and all of your dreams, your all of your store dreams will be consumed at once. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't say here what the extra reward is. Oh. I think it's just gonna be like that you tear up. It might be this chair, honestly. You might be like sleeping on this thing, honest. Honestly, that might be it. But I guess it doesn't say here. Maybe it's a GMS exclusive reward. How many event rings can you get? Um, four, right? You can get the Synergy Ring, Master SS Ring, the Eventual Reboot Ring, and the Cosmos Ring. Hey, what up, Dr. Javisaurus? Jav Dr. Javisaurus, how you doing? We're doing AOK, -OK, man. We're going through all of the events that are coming. Ah, here are the Goblin Firecrackers. 0.2% chance at 1,000. 0.8% chance at 500, 9% chance at 100, 30% chance at 50, and 60% chance at just the buff. I can't believe my initial guess was 50, 40, and this altogether 10, with obviously being weighted towards 100. I can't believe I was so close. Is this even good or just an accessory? Uh, what is the rings? The firecrackers, you, you just use the firecrackers. It costs you 50 coins. And then you have a 30% chance to get your coins back. 60% chance to just get a buff. 
That's 15 weapon and magic attack for 15 minutes, so it's really bad. And then a very small chance to get way more goblin coins back. So you're just gambling your goblin coins for a fireworks effect and maybe getting more coins back. If you get more coins back, then you can buy a bunch of stuff from the shops, and of course. But that's what all the firecrackers do. Goblin statues, blessing. So that's the one... Um, uh, oh, that's the one we haven't read yet, right? Yeah, okay, so that's the next one. Blessing of the Goblin Statue. Uh, enter the Goblin Full Moon Night Market map between the 15 and the 25th minute mark of each hour to receive either a one-eyed goblin or two-eyed goblin's blessing. When the goblin's blessing is active, all the characters in the Goblin Full Moon Night mar uh, Market map will receive the blessing effect. One-eyed goblin will give its blessing every odd number of hours, and two-eyed goblin will give its blessing every even number of hours. Goblin statues blessing effects will stack with other buff effects and each goblin statue gives different blessing effects so keep that in mind right okay the one eyed gives you 15 percent experience for 30 minutes so it's like a very small mvp atmospheric on top of everything else gambling simulator yeah and the two eyed one will give you 15 all stat 15 weapon and magic attack 15 percent defense ignore 15 percent boss damage and 1500 hp and mp for 30 minutes so basically like um, a slightly weaker uh, event title level of buff, basically. So that should be... So between... Yeah, between XX15 and XX25. There's going to be a chance to either get extra experience or extra boss damage IED, I guess. <laughs> and then this one is not in reboot. Burning World Quattro World Leap. We don't have any of that. And then it's just the Sunny Sundays, yeah. Okay. So I hope that gave you guys uh, some extra insight on what is coming, what is good for you, maybe what is not very useful for you, and where you can find all the information. So if you go to exclamation mark events, you will find this that I made right here. You will see the dates and the weeks right here. The Sunny Sundays with direct link to what the sunny Sunday is going to be for that week. You can always check right there. I made um, posts for all of those, which should load immediately, just like this one. There you go. And then for the events coming up, of course, uh, once today's over, I will remove these two, um, these two first weeks as the fairy bros will be gone and this column will also be gone after today. Uh, remember to pick up your fairy bros golden dudes, by the way. And then for any of these events, if you ever wanna go back, you can always just hover over it click and the patch notes will um will like lock down immediately to where the specific event is so you can always read up on the specific event uh, i always keep this up to date i change it whenever extra information comes out um i try to organize it as well as possible this time i use uh, a header with the events underneath and i use the edit like the specific dates if dmt comes out i'll definitely add it to this list as well so Either follow uh, the link or just check exclamation mark events in the chat and you'll always be able to find this information.